what I am going to do is, first of all, I want to thank um, Sound Careers for being able to have me here in the Western Center for Nursing for inviting me to come and participate. Um, my name is Dr. Robinson, and my background is in nursing. And what I want to be able to do today is really I have a story to be able to tell. I was given some information that said that you all really wanted to know how people got into their careers a little bit. So I've designed my presentation to talk about how I got into um, nursing. And you all have to let me know by the time I finished, if I generated enough interest that you all will ask me questions about it and, and then we'll talk about it. So I'm gonna start first by sharing my screen. If there's something that comes up and you really just want to ask me about it, use your reactions, your emojis or something and just put your hands up and I've got some help. Miss Brenda Little will let me know if I can't see you that your hands up and you have a question. Otherwise, I'm going to share my story and you can also ask questions um, toward the end. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. And you'll see that the title of my presentation is Thinking About Nursing. Oh, my. So first of all, some, someone give me the heads up. Can everybody see the screen OK? I see Brenda nodding. We're good. OK, so let's go ahead and keep going. Now, the reason I want to talk about this and I have it set up this way is that I have been in nursing for over 30 years. But the background and the image that I wanted to give with this one is that sometimes on this, you're on a journey. I have the mountain in the background and I have this very colorful balloon. And it's the idea that you're going on this journey. You got to pack your tools. You got to sort of know where you're going and you're going to be traveling. It can really take you anywhere your mind wants you to be able to go. So in these balloons, you know, the wind kind of blows you where you're going to be going. But really, it's your decisions. It's your choices. And so I'm going to invite you to be on this journey with me. And I'm going to show you just bits and pieces of what my life has been like from preschool to PhD. So I'll start first with just telling you just a little bit. I actually grew up in Forest, Mississippi, very, very small town. Um, in FARS and what got me really interested before I knew I could think about healthcare, it was me watching my grandmother take care of um, myself and my other brothers and sisters. There's eight of us all together. And what was impressed me when I was younger was how well she took care of the young people. And then how is it that my own family members wanted to give back? So for some reason that stuck with me, you know, I was a very observant child when I was growing up and I just listened a lot. I didn't do a whole lot of talking. I just did a lot of listening and watching, but that's where I got my very first inclination that I wanted to do something that allowed me to help take care of others. And it really was because of my grandmother. So that was my first spark of doing things in this small town of Forest, Mississippi. Now, by the time I got to middle school and high school, I don't know about you, but I love drawing. And I picked that up when I was really young. And then when I got into uh, middle school, where you start being introduced to the chemistry and biology, and I got a chance to just let my imagination go wild in the sense that with my drawing and some of the biology, you get to draw pictures. You know, you get to do diagrams, you get to dissect animals depending on your classes. And I got to do more drawing and map things out. I got to see blood vessels and muscles. And I just like, oh, wow, I was just so excited. Um, the biology and the chemistry, Chemistry, you got a chance to talk about the um, how atoms were put together, what cells were supposed to do, and you got a chance to be introduced to labs, you know, with your partners, you got a chance to put things together. Sometimes things blew up depending on how you mix things together. I, mean, I really did have fun. But I also like poetry and music. This is where I kind of start using jazz a little bit. And I didn't know it would stick with me and what difference it would make later, but it did. So I wanted to be able to show you that in my middle and high school years, this is where my imagination began to sort of take off. And it was other people's encouragement that also allowed me to think about things in different ways. But it was when I got to the college and the university. Now, this is where things began to change. Remember, I didn't know I wanted to do nursing. I didn't know I wanted to do it until I got to the university level. And I remember I came from a small town and I went into this big lecture hall 
And I was overwhelmed by the size of the hall to go from a classroom of about you know, 20 people to a lecture hall of over 500 people, I was totally overwhelmed. And then I had to choose what kind of sciences I would go into. And again, I was sort of going into the healthcare field, but hadn't made a commitment to nursing. And when they told me all these sciences that you could choose, I was going to the University of Washington, I had no clue what I was going to choose. And I didn't know I needed to just go to the counselor, sit down with them and have them help me map out a plan. I thought I had to do it all on my own. And, and so what happened to me was that I actually met a young man. That man became my husband and we started a family very early. So what made me go into nursing was that when we started our family, I had to figure out how I was going to take care of my family. That's when I knew I wanted to go into nursing. <laughs> so that's when my journey started was there. And um, I actually came out of the university when I first started and went to the community college. And in the community college is where I got my diploma as an RN. And I worked, you know how you work, you have a family, you have to do all that kind of going to school, going back to work and doing all that. And, uh, but I had this idea that in work, I actually was really good at precepting other nurses. I got better and better at that. And so I thought I would go back to school. And in doing that, I spent a lot of time in the libraries. Uh, so I'm just giving this as an idea that I started out sort of not knowing what I wanted to be able to do and how to make that choice. It was when I started my family is when I felt nursing was going to be what I would do. And I spent a lot of time in the libraries going to do research. And uh, when I went and got my BSN, I actually went to the University of Washington Tacoma campus. And again, this is a picture of their library. I spent a lot of time in the library. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, with the work and what you do, I had to get support of my family and uh, for them to know that I would be away. But a lot of times when I was away, I was either in a cubicle somewhere, I was somewhere looking at the research that needed to be done, but I spent a lot of time in the libraries. Yet what I wanted to impress upon you is that in my career as nursing, I have been in the acute care, I have been in critical care, I have been in the emergency room, I have been in outpatient settings, I have even been a research nurse. And right now I currently teach at the University of Washington. And so what I wanted you to be able to get from this bubble is that no matter where you want to go, there's probably a nurse attached to that. So you'll see things like being a neuroscience nurse or an emergency nurse or a pediatric nurse. If you can think about what you want to be able to do, there's probably a nursing role attached to that. And so you've got all these areas in which you can explore and go. And um, to be able to do that, I must say that it really took the encouragement of other people to help me keep going. So even though I talk about the preschool to PhD, I started out as a diploma nurse with an associate of arts degree. I worked, had my family, went back to school and got a, a bachelor's degree. I also worked, went back to school. And because I knew I was good at precepting other nurses, I took the nurse educator route and decided to go back to school and get a master's as a nurse educator. And in that nurse educator role, I think someone saw something in me and they said, you know, you should go back to school and get your PhD. And I'm thinking, I was pretty happy teaching already. Do I really need to do that? But they kept at me for about three years saying, you know, you really should go back and get your PhD. When you go back and get your PhD in nursing, they're really asking you to do research. And I really didn't know what that meant for me. But my research work really began to look at HIV prevention and looking at the health of African-American women. So that's where my research work went. But if someone had not encouraged me to do it, I probably would not have pursued it. So I think someone saw something in me that says, you could probably do this. And I followed them up on it and I did it. Now, there were a lot of challenges as I went along the way. But I want to be able to say I end up working with an organization and put a lot of volunteer time with them. And this organization is called Mary Mahoney Professional Nursing Organization. When I was an associate degree nurse, I went to a function that was put on by the Mary Mahoney Professional Nurses Organization. They were doing a fundraiser for scholarships for the, uh, nurse or students who are going into nursing. And so I sat there and I saw this stage of phenomenal women 
all black women on this stage and what they were saying was, we want you to go into healthcare. We need you to take care of us when we are no longer able to do that. And I just said, I wanna be a part of that team. I want to be able to give back in that way. And I was an associate degree nurse then. I had my RN license. And yet what was being promoted was for you to go back to school and keep advancing, figure out a way to keep giving back. And so I actually did. And so I actually volunteered with this organization. I have kept volunteering with this organization for a long time. They named themselves after Mary Eliza Mahoney. This is an organization that started back in 1949. We are now 71 years old. And we have been mentoring students. Um, they mentored me along my way and in my journey to be the nurse that I am now. And I think, you remember I said someone encouraged me to do what I'm doing now to go back for my PhD. It actually happened to be this author, Dr. Lois Price Spratlin, who actually wrote this book about African-American registered nurses here in Seattle. In this particular book, she actually talks about the 13 nurses who actually started Mary Mahoney in 1949. And then she tells you about their struggles, their triumphs. It's a wonderful book to be able to read. And it also talks about some of the nurses that are here that I actually have had the chance uh, to meet. And they have had nursing from school nursing to nurse anesthetists. You'll hear about their stories and where they started. A minute, uh, many of them came from the South but you get to talk about that with them. And then you have Mary Eliza herself. They actually, another author back in 1986, Miss Miller, she actually chronologed a lot of the life of Mary Eliza Mahoney. That's an incredible book to read. The thing I wanna be able to go to next, and I hope we don't leave each other in 37 seconds. I hope so too. <laughs> and I talked to some of my students most recently and asked them, what is it about nursing you want me to tell this group? They said, nursing is flexible, it takes time, and you get to advocate for others. And since they're giving me 20, so this is just a, sometimes we had fun in my classes. This is something I kind of want to talk about. If I'm going to leave you in 13 seconds, I don't want to leave you with where you we're shouldn't. going. <laughs> so I'm going to run to this one. These are a lot of resources that you can go to and you're gonna get these. The, the thing that I did not share with you earlier when I talked about the elementary school to the University of Washington is that when I was coming up, we were still in times of segregation in the early years. And so I was at an all black school. I had all black faculty. You know, that was the environment that I grew up in. By the time I got to fourth grade, our schools integrated. And so things just beginning to change in terms of my exposure to other people outside of my community. Um, but my grandmother still kind of instilled in me this love and my teachers kind of instilled in me this appreciation for education and so that has stayed with me. And so I have gone from this small community to this huge campus at the University of Washington where people are just doing all kinds of phenomenal things and it has changed what I do now. And I'm gonna go to this. And this is where I kind of rushed to before we left, just to be able to share some resources with you that I think the uh, Washington Center of Nursing on their website, and maybe Brenda can put some of this in the chat box, some of the links that you can go to that really give you some really good blueprints for where you might want to go. So I just wanted to leave those there. And I um, actually cropped part of that picture. It's going to say nursing profession research guide for counselors. But I think if you go to this, you'll get some good information as well. And when you think about the scholarship loans and grants, I put a link here to be able to talk about, well, what are ways schools can be paid for? I was so determined to go to school that I was going to go no matter what. So I did do scholarships and I actually did quite a bit of loans, um, but I was determined I was going to be a nurse. What I wanna be able to invite you to be able to think about is I really hope I've generated at least enough interest that you will ask me questions. I particularly like Andre Lord as a poet. And uh, remember I said I was very quiet and sort of on the young end when I was coming up, I did a lot of watching, didn't do a lot of talking. Um, today you'd be so surprised that fast I'm talking. I usually don't do a whole lot of talking. But I have learned that sometimes you got to speak up, you got to be willing to ask questions. And so I love this when she said, when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard or welcomed. But when we're silent, we're still afraid. So it's better to speak. 
And I want to end with that in the sense that I did a lot of prep to just be ready for today, but I really was kind of afraid of how I was going to come across, what I was going to say to you. But I, I, I just want to say that even at this level, I'm still learning. I'm still going forward with the things that I like to do, and I'm learning to speak up more and more. So the future of nursing really needs you. There's some statistics I'm going to give you that says in this field, in the research says that between 2019 and 2029, this is going to be one of the top professions where there's going to be growth. In 2019, they know they needed about 3 million nurses. By 2029, they're going to need 3 point. 1 million nurses. So you're going to be in an area where there's going to be growth. Um, so I just wanted to give that to you. And, and then I want to begin to wrap up because I really want to be able to listen to you and be able to answer some of your questions. And so I want to thank you so much for being patient to listen to me. Um, thank you again, the Center of Nursing, um, for allowing me to be here as well. And um, Sound Careers for Health for um, inviting me to be over here to talk to you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm literally going to just open this up for a conversation and tell me what you think. So you um, participants, you guys can like unmute yourself and probably ask questions directly to Dr. Robinson, or if you feel more comfortable raising your hand and we can call on you or you can type your questions into the chat box. Now, I have a question to be able to ask while you all are thinking about it. Is everyone high school students in our audience today? Can y'all just give me some kind of reaction? Are you mostly high school students that are here today? Yes. I see one hand. Yes, I see another check. Okay. There's a lot of guesses in the chat box, so they're typing Great. it too. I see someone say, what was the biggest challenge that I faced? Um, I think the biggest challenge that I faced from the early beginning was how to choose what I would do in nursing. And then how do I get my family to support me while I'm on that journey to get it done? I think that has been one of my biggest challenges just in getting started. Now I've had challenges working with patients I've had challenges with working with some of my faculty to get them to be supportive. It just sort of depends on where I was in my journey. Thank you for that question. Another what, question, was it hard to pay off your debt? I'm gonna be honest. I think I'm gonna be 99 years old, still paying off this uh, <laughs> nursing debt. Um, right now, uh, you remember I use loans from the associate degree all the way to the PhD. So my debt is pretty high. Um, and so right now I'm actually paying off probably three different loans right now with my, um, my education, but I would do it again. Um, so I have to really budget out how much I'm paying. And um, I actually do apply for things that allow me to, um, I actually did a faculty loan where you can be a faculty member and that for so many years that they would pay for some of your education or pay for your, your, the cost that you've invested in it. So I did that. So is it hard to pay off your debt? As long as I'm working, it's not gonna be hard. The pandemic totally changed the way we do work. And fortunately being at the university, I could still keep working and the format for me to teach was okay. So I kind of say is it's challenging, but I sort of knew that in the beginning that I was gonna have to pay off the money that I was borrowing. I have a question. Yes. When you were in high school, um, I know like being wanting to become a nurse, I worry about my grades for getting into a good college. Did you ever like have problems with your grades where it was like, okay, well this, like, okay, I'm just gonna like give an example, like an A minus or a B or a B minus, that kind of stuff. Would that like hold me back into getting into a good college? When, thank you for your question on that one. When I was going to school, I didn't really, um, the things that were important for the universities was at that time they were looking at our SAT scores they were looking at our GRE scores. They were looking at our, um, well, that was me going into more of the college part. 
But as long as I was performing well in the sciences and looked well at that, my GPA was probably a 3.6 or 3.7 when I left high school going into college. So I knew I was competitive enough to get into a university. And so that didn't, that was not on my mind so much to, as I was focused on, I knew I was going to college and I knew I was gonna get accepted somewhere. Um, and I knew my grades needed to be uh, at least an A or B average. So I went for the top. Wherever I could perform my best, I went there. But I didn't start off saying I needed to have a 4.0 through high school, that just was not me. Um, but I knew I needed to at least have a 3.0 or above. So we have another question in the chat box and we have about four minutes. So um, from Ashley, do you have an opinion on mandatory overtime working as a nurse? Uh, yes, I do have an opinion on that mandatory overtime uh, working as a nurse. And it sort of sounds like this. Depends on the need of your shift, what they need. But when you're already working 12 hours and you go past that 12 hours, there becomes a point where even you become ineffective at what you're doing and you may need that break. So um, my thing is when we don't need that, use it when you need it. So I have to say, we have to kind of be willing to respond to what the situation calls for. And I'm gonna give you the perfect example. I don't know if anybody you have been watching what's happening in India right now with how many people are having the COVID cases. And you see that there are families who are trying to get their family members to a hospital so they can get the services that they need. Or in our early years in New York, when a lot of people were dying with COVID and people had to stay and be available. So in situations like that, I tend to wanna, I'll give what I can give. But on a standard, I would rather us not push our frontline workers, our health care workers to the point where we can't be effective workers. I think we're not doing a service when we do that. 